Hey guys, this is Monica with Academic Phoenix Plus, and this is going to be the second lesson for Introduction to Maya. So today we're going to be covering several tools such as Extrude, and I also want to show you how to assign a shader, which is basically color, into your model. So what are we going to start with? Well, I personally like to start with the Garden of Earthly Delights by Bosch which I probably just slaughtered his last name. And I'm going to pick one of the characters in, in this very intricate painting. And if you can't see it, it's going to be an instrument. It's located over here at the right. And for a little close up, we're going to create this. And by this, I actually mean the instrument. All right, so let's get started. When we're about to model any object, it's really important to take a look at its basic shape. So when I see this, I can see that it is basically a cylinder. So when I look into my tools in Maya, and I'm again, I'm gonna be using polygons. I have uh, several tools that I can use and I'm going to be using a cylinder. So I'm gonna start with that. Can I click it? Remember guys, interactive creation is turned off. That's why when I click it once, I actually get the default shape in the center of the grid. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in by pressing F. I'm gonna press five so I can see the texture. And then I'm just gonna scoot it up. Over here to the right, I am going to go into my inputs and actually reduce my subdivisions to perhaps 18, something a little bit less polygons. And I'm also going to reduce my cap to zero. It'll be easier to select faces when I actually model. Instead of selecting every single triangle, I'm gonna select just one face. I'm going to scale this. Now I can grab the Y and actually scale it up like so or if I hold on control and then grab Y, it will actually scale on all directions except for Y. And that's actually really helpful for me. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up as well. I'm going to grab the top face and then I'm going to edit mesh, extrude. I'm gonna click on this little switch. This is, uh, the first one is called normal. The second one is called world space. So I'm gonna use that and bring it up a little bit. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh Extrude again. This time I'm going to scale it a little bit so I can get the little shape like so. All right, so now it looks like that. Then I'm gonna press the letter G. G is actually a shortcut, which is the last command that you just made. So the last command I made was Extrude. So when I click on G again, it's going to give me Extrude. There it is. Move it up. Press G again. Scale it down, G again, lift it up. Oh, that looks kind of thick, undo. Scale a little bit, G and up. If I look at my reference picture again, I can see that it starts to turn into a, um, well, it's got a little detail here, which I'm gonna add. And then it's, it's, it gives you like a horn or whatever that's called. I'm not an instrument expert as you guys can see, so that little cone right there. If anybody knows it, please tell me what it is and I will, I'm sure it's got a name. Everything on the planet has a label. So if anybody knows what the name of this particular part of the instrument is, feel free to share it in my comments. Okay, so to create a cone, I am going to uh, extrude a little bit and then scale a little bit. And again, G, move it up a little bit and then scale a little bit more and then finally a little bit more, maybe a little wider, a little higher, something in that skillet. There you go. To make it hollow, I'm going to click on G again. I'm going to bring it in, G one more time, and then make it hollow, and then scale it in uniformly. All right. So there's a couple of details I forgot to uh, add which I pointed out earlier, but I forgot, and I'll show you how to add detail. So for example, there's a little nook right here, and there is a, kind of like an edge right there. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. So to add that information, I'm going to go to uh, the Insert Edge Loop tool, which is found under Edit Mesh. I'm gonna insert an edge right here. Then I'm gonna select those particular faces. Click once, shift click, and uh, double tap and then you're gonna get around the edge. Edit mesh, extrude. You can bring it in a, li a little bit out like so. There you go. And let's go to the edge up here. So same thing, 
Edit Mesh, insert its loop tool, click and drag where you want it. And in this case, I'm going to select my, actually the edges will work. I'm going to double click and then just scale so I get a nice little edge. It's not enough of, of an edge, so I'm just going to put one more underneath it and then just scale it in, whoa! Scale it in just a little bit to give it that beveled edge, like so. looks like let me look at my reference picture again it's definitely a lot longer in both sides so I am going to grab the vertices click and drag and just move it up a little bit and then this one I'm actually going to move down and then scale and I grab these guys and just scale and then push up okay okay so well, the next thing we're going to do is press the number three in your keyboard. And what that's going to get you is a smoothed preview. And the, you have to be very careful with using the number one on your keyboard, number two, and number three, especially the number three on your keyboard. That is a smooth preview. That means that it looks like I smoothed it out, but the reality is, is that it's still regular geometry. How can I tell? When I render. So when I render, you can see that the edges are actually very sharp. Let me show you a little bit closer here. You can see how smooth those edges are? Well, when I render, they're actually sharp. So that's actually just a preview. The reality is a number one on your keyboard. That is the actual geometry. So you have to be very careful. You never want to model in three. Three is more of a preview. You always model in one and then hop over to three. So as you can see, it kind of collapses right here. And we really want to keep the edge. So we're just going to add some more edges around here so that it keeps its shape. So guess what we're going to use? Well, hopefully you're getting the idea, insert edge loop tool. So we're going to go over here and just kind of do one loop here, one loop there, and then test it out with number three. All right, so that's looking better, but over here we've lost a lot of our shape. So again, I go to my tool, I'm going to make one right around here, one at the base as well and probably just one over here so it keeps the shape. So now I'm gonna go back to the number three and you can see that now in third mode or three, the preview, I'm getting a nice beveled edge. There's a problem down here, right? So press one and just add a couple of edges down here as well. Press three and you can see that it keeps its shape. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now there's a couple of holes. There's about six of them, so we'll throw those in there as well with a little trick. The trick is actually adding some edges, and basically you can just extrude a hole. So we'll put that one there, one there, and one here. So it's going to be one, two, three, and then also three more. So one, two, three. Okay. Select the face. One, two, three. Might as well extrude them all at the same time. So they all have the same depth. Edit mesh, extrude. So this is the difference between normal space versus world space. This is normal space, which is basically the polygons, normals facing perpendicular from the polygon. So the normal is actually sticking out perpendicular for, from the polygon. That's a normal and therefore that's where this is based on. If you click on this little switch right here, it will go into world space, which we recognize it as X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna use the normal mode and then just push this back. I'm gonna push it back a little bit, press G again, and then push it back further. Press three, and there you go. We've got some instrument holes, Wee. All right, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and give it some texture. What we're going to do is actually assign a new shader to it. But first, let's delete the history. The history over here on the right, as you can see, is just full of information of all the little tweaks that we've done. You can see that we've extruded. Extrude over here as well, the split ring, which is basically the insert edge loop tool. And finally, the, the couple of extrude we just did. So it remembers everything, which can actually take up a lot of space. We don't really need all that information. 
edit, delete by type history. And uh, I'm going to move this to the center of the grid a little bit and then modify freeze transformations. That will turn this all into zeros and scales to one. Let's go ahead and assign a texture to it. We're going to select this instrument. We're going to, there's several ways we can actually assign a shader to it. We're going to right click, assign new material. And uh, there's several things you can choose from, but the one that we want is probably a blend. A blend actually has a little highlight information, which is going to give us a, like a fake reflection. If it was something flat like wood, you know, like a uh, bark, uh, rubber, you might want to actually use just a Lambert. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and tackle a blend. You can see that we now have a blend and now our object is actually a lot more shinier. So when I render, it's going to look shinier. All right, let's open up the blend. Of course, we have color. So let's go ahead and change the color. It's a little bit more orangey. Okay, now that we have the color in, let's go ahead and add some details. We have a little bit of gold around the edges. So I'm going to go back to this mode, which is one, the actual mode. And I'm going to click and double click. So again, it's just one face and then shift, double click. When you double click like that, it's going to select all the faces on a row. So let's go ahead and right click, assign new material. I'm going to use another blend. And this time I want it to be more uh, gold. Let's go ahead and select a couple more faces here. Here. Might as well go all the way around. Whoops, sometimes it does that, it's okay. So sometimes it does something weird like that. Even though I've selected all of these, it does that. That's okay. I mean, I can easily select a whole section and then deselect certain areas. So you can do a control shift and it actually does a bigger selection and then control to deselect. So here I am deselecting. I'm gonna deselect this and deselect this. And then of course, look around to make sure you have everything you want. Let's see if we can go around here. Oh, that one worked. So we already have a gold material. So I'm going to right click, assign existing material, and I'm looking for my blend too. And you can see that now it's turned into gold. I grab this and rotate it, just like the painting. See what it looks like when we render. Whoops, cut it off a little bit. Let me show you something up here at the top left. There is a resolution gate. This will actually show you what you're going to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it like this, render it out. And that's basically the introduction on how to quickly make an instrument and also assign a shader. Of course, there's a lot more you can do with this instrument. You can actually add texture to it and everything, but that's for a future lesson. So hopefully you guys got something out of it. Um, I look forward to seeing your stuff. Remember to keep creating and I will see you next time.